Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, and I am going over Lesson 8.01. And so today's homework, print all the flashcards, practice them at least five days in a row. Continue to practice the ones you get wrong, or the ones that you don't know like that. I mean, you should see that flashcard, instant, flip it over, yep, check your answer. I can't stress the flashcards enough. I made Unit A, and you're taking Unit A, because there was struggle in units one, two, and three. And that's okay, because we're gonna fix that now. We're gonna really focus in on, I need to know all this in order to do well for the rest of the year. Okay, so that's why this is so important. So when you do these flashcards, I made them flashcard style for you. So all you have to do is print it, flip over your paper, print on the backside, cut them out, okay? And the reason is, your brain learns differently. If you hear it, if you read it, if you write it, and it's easy to say, oh yeah, I knew that. But when you actually have to say the answer or even just think the answer before you flip it over and confirm, it means that your brain actually fully remembered it. So do your flashcards, do all of them, five days in a row. It should be boom, 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 uh, stuck, put that one in a pile. Boom, 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 oh, I got stuck on this one, put it in a pile. After five days, just go over those, the pile, until every single flashcard you know like this it's really going to help you all year. So I took the time to make them for you. I had some students who are in an advanced chemistry class check them over for me, find all the little mistakes, like typos in that. If you find any other ones, let me know. But I spent a lot of time and effort putting those together nicely for you. So use them. They are for you. I don't need them. They're for you. <laughs> all right. Then, um, so now you're watching this recording, which is the next part. And it's all about the bass, that bass, that bass. Yes, you get poor singing when Mrs. KJ is tired and stressed. And that's the end of my singing. So let's talk about the bass. I cannot stress enough how important units are in chemistry. So what are units? They are the letters after a number. For example, the L in 15.2 L. What does the L stand for? Liters. So 15.2 liters. The G in 8.103 G. What does the G stand for? Grams. So the units tell you what the number is measuring. They always go after the number. Knowing your units, their abbreviations, and what they measure will make all the math problems in chemistry easier. Again, right now it probably feels like, eh, whatever, it's one more thing, but in second semester, we're hitting the math hardcore. And if you know your units, you're already one step ahead on all the math. And before you just want to close your computer and cry that we're doing lots of math second semester, don't worry. I'm going to be working on that. We'll make it happen. So one thing at a time, we'll get this down first. All right, metric units. The metric system uses a base unit. It's all about the base. Okay, no more singing. And puts a prefix in front of that base unit to show how large or small a substance is. So... Um, there are a lot of metric base units, but really, we are going to be covering these three. So you need to know that a meter is abbreviated M, and what it measures is distance. How big is a meter? Right now, show me with your hands. How big is it? About this big. And it's the distance from your shoulder to your fingertips. All right, so that's about a meter. It's about the same as a yard. It's about three inches bigger than a yard. So if you know how big a yardstick is, that's about a meter. And it's good to have an idea of how big these things are because otherwise they don't mean anything to you. All right, so liters. Liter is abbreviated lowercase l, and it measures volume. So liter, think of a two liter bottle of pop. So that's two liters. So half of that is a liter. And grams. Grams measure mass, and one gram is about how much a paper clip weighs. I know, weight and mass are very, very different, but for chemistry, you're going to hear me using them both interchangeably, because for what we're doing in chemistry, think of mass like how much it weighs. Really, it's how much stuff it's made up of, but we measure it in kilograms, just like we measure our weight in pounds. Okay, wait a minute. How do you know if the M stands for meter or mass? Okay, so I just told you meter is abbreviated M. And over here, mass is abbreviated M. And yes, they are both lowercase m. 
So how do you know if the M is for meter or the M is for mass? Answer is, if the M is after a number, it's the meter. If M is in a math formula, such as density equals mass over volume, which becomes D equals M over V, the M is mass. So if they're using the M as a variable, it's the variable for mass, okay? If it's after a number, then it's always meters. So you gotta use it in context. All right, now let's go back to our metric system. And I almost started singing, but I said I wouldn't. And we're gonna talk about the prefixes. There are lots of prefixes. The ones we're gonna use the most in this class are kilo, centi, and milli. So kilo by itself is abbreviated K, but you don't ever see it by itself. It's always with something. So it's kilometer, kilogram, or kiloliter. Or you can pronounce it kilometer or kilogram or kiloliter. And how big is it compared to the base? Well, kilo means 1,000. So that means one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Or if we do it the other way, if I say, okay, what if I only have a meter? Well, a meter is only about this long. A kilometer, think of like a mile. Well, obviously there's lots of meters in one mile. So in fact, there is a thousand, right? A thousand meters in every kilometer. So if I only have one meter, I actually am dividing it by a thousand or I'm bumping the decimal three places to the right and I have one thousandth, one thousandth of a kilometer is a meter. Centimeters, centi is abbreviated C, but again, it's a prefix, so you never see it by itself. It's always centimeter, centigram, centiliter. And centi means one hundredth, so 0 0.01, like a penny, right? There's a hundred pennies in a dollar. Centi, one cent, one penny, ah, see, easy to remember. All right, so one centimeter equals 0 0.01 meter, or a hundredth of a meter. And if we go the other way, 100 centimeters equals one meter. So one meter has 100 centimeters. A centimeter is approximately the width of your pinky finger's fingernail. <laughs> so your pinky finger fingernail is about a centimeter. Milli. Milli is abbreviated M, but wait, wait, wait. We already said M by itself after a number is what? Meter. M as a variable is mass. Milli is a prefix, so it goes in front. So you have a millimeter, a milligram, a milliliter. Because if you have just M, then it's meter. Okay, so careful on that one. So milli means a thousandth. So one millimeter is one thousandth of a meter, just like one meter is a thousandth of a kilometer. And 1,000 millimeters equals one meter, just like there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. And that's because the metric system is based on units of 10. So I would say I need a thousand millimeters to get one meter. I need a thousand of these to get a kilometer. So that's how it goes in order. Kilometers, think of close to miles. Meters, close to yards. Centimeter, the distance from here to here. And a millimeter, it's not perfectly accurate, but I always think of, if you just look, put a couple of hairs together, like three or four hairs, and you say, oh yeah, put them together, that's about a millimeter. So it's pretty tiny. So you need a thousand of those to get to a meter. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how we're gonna convert. We're gonna convert from one unit to another. So I gave you these standards, which hopefully these are ones that you're like, oh yeah, I knew that. I knew there's 100 centimeters in a meter. I knew there it's 1,000 millimeters in a meter. I know there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer going the other direction. Um, but I'm also gonna go through the stair step of how you're actually going to solve for that. All right, now this staircase is on your periodic table, which you can use on all tests and quizzes. So you don't have to memorize it. I got it for you. So pretend you are a small person on the steps. 
you start on a step that matches the unit given. All right, so I have my little person here and I'm starting on the base. And the reason I'm starting on the base is we're gonna do this example first. 75M equals blank KM. What does M stand for? After a number, that's how we know it is meter. And it, we put it on the base. Now remember the base, oh, I wanna sing again, are meters, liters, and grams. So those are our bases. So I'm starting at the base. And step two, hop to the desired step. All right, so I'm going from the base all the way up to kilo. All right, now here's the thing. We have to keep track of how many hops we had. So we started at the base and we went one, two, three hops to the left. Okay, so that's important because we're gonna move the decimal the same number of places, the same number of decimal places in the same direction. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite it down here. So I have 75 meters equals blah, blah, blah kilometers. Don't know that yet. So I take 75. I said I'm gonna move the decimal. Now, there was no decimal given. So where do I put the decimal? Well, think about if it was money. If I had $75, where does the decimal go? It goes at the end of the number, right? Okay, so if no decimal is given to you, it just goes at the end of the number like it would with money. All right, so now we are moving this decimal, which is starting right there. We're moving it three places because my little guy did three hops. He hopped to the left, so I'm moving my decimal to the left. So I'm moving it one, two, three. And I have this empty space. What number do I put in for an empty space? Zero. And then you always write a zero in front of the decimal so you don't lose your decimal. So my answer is 0 0.075 kilometers is the same as 75 meters. Now when you do these, it helps to think about it. So think about a meter and a kilometer. A meter is about the size of what? Your arm from your shoulder to your fingertips or one yard, a kilometer is about how far? It's close to a mile. It's actually two thirds of a mile, but think of it like a mile. So, okay, think of it. I only have 75 meters. How many meters are equal to one kilometer? 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. All right, in this problem, do I have more or less than 1,000? Obviously I have less. So am I gonna have more than one kilometer or less than one kilometer? I better have less than one kilometer because to get one kilometer, I need a thousand meters. I don't have a thousand meters, so I can't even have one kilometer. So thinking it through like that can help as well to make sure it makes sense. All right, let's do another one. I have 95 kilometers and I want to know how many meters that is. All right, so we take our little guy and he is starting up there. And this time, and why is he starting up here? Because he starts with the given. So he started with kilo. So he starts up there. And where is he going to? He's going to the base because M by itself after a number stands for meters. And meters is a base. So we go to the base and it is three hops three hops, but this way I hopped to the right. So I take my 95. Where does the decimal go if it's not given to you? Think of money, it goes at the end, and I'm moving it three spots to the right. If there was nothing there, I fill it in with zeros. So one spot, two spots, three spots to the right. So my answer is 95,000 meters. Does that make sense? Kilo means thousand. I have 95 kilometers or 95,000 meters. That one makes sense. All right, there is more to this lesson. You're gonna have to watch the next video, but my program to allow me to make videos is about to run out of time. 
And so go ahead and finish this lesson in the next video. Just scroll.